Hello, welcome to another episode of the Long Hop Cricket Podcast with me, Owen. Alongside me, as usual, is Dave. And today we are doing another rainy day podcast, which uh, Dave's going to introduce the subject for us today. So, Dave, what, what are we going to uh, talk about today? This will be a rainy day podcast today. Yeah. Go on. Well, we haven't got a topic. <laughs> be blunt, totally honest. It is ten to one at right. in the we, we, in the evening, and this has to be. And this will be going out tomorrow. So we do. We did have when we do have comments on topics we could do, but we didn't want to do back to back. We spent a lot of our 11. time tonight watching gorilla uh, <laughs> videos, videos on YouTube <laughs> and pandas playing with leaves. But we didn't want to do England's worst eleven, and then, then come go back, back to and another do 11, another yeah. eleven. And it's just us drafting 11. So we're just going to riff this one. We're just... Like a f- couple of old we're just pros. Gonna talk, we're just going to talk about cricket. Yeah. We're just going to talk about cricket. Um, do you want me to run through the news? Go on. Have you got some news? Well, I'll f- news certainly find us some. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. So, um, South Africa win the second test versus New Zealand. Okay. Does that... I haven't really been keeping up with that. What's the do? Is that 2 0, 1 1? No, shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> South Africa win by eight wickets. Right. Good uh, game. Yeah, actually, somebody who I can't pronounce his name, I'm sure in the comments I'll get butchered for it. The Is it the spinner of Maharaja? Maharaj picked right. up six for 40 in the second inning. That's pretty good, isn't it? Fair play. South Africa look like a team. Oh, it's, it's a mismatch as it's Africa and New Zealand. But what, they look like a good team, don't tell they? Tell you what I'd be interested to have a look at. If you could get up, I want to have a look at the Test World Rankings. Be really yeah. interested to have a look at the Test World Rankings and see if we think teams match up with their position. Riffing. In the World Rankings. There you go. Let's have a look at that. Because I, I think, I don't think the world rankings represent it fairly of what, who's the best team. You want, would you like the rest of the news before I... Go? Yeah, but we'll do that. Go on then, any more? Uh, Australia and India are in the third test match. Right. With, looks like it's 451 plays, 360 for six at the moment, so... Australia made 451 with uh, Steve Smith making 178 not out. Right. But uh, that looks like it's might be heading towards a draw. Yeah. It's a shame, isn't it? Are you still, f- you still for the four-day test matches? Yeah. Right. That's stupid. So sh- we've got Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. We've actually got a lot of test cricket on at the moment. Yeah, we do. So let's have a look at that. They, uh, Bangladesh, Borges, uh Made 467 in their first innings. Sri Lanka a good crack, isn't it? made 338, and now they are 268 for six. So Sri Lanka lead Bangladesh by 100. They're effectively 139 for eight. Bangladesh could pick up another test win here, couldn't they? Yeah, definitely. Was it, we were looking at the thing. Is um, is it Harath? It's got a record. The, the, is it the most wickets or is it the most fifers? Most test wickets for a left arm spinner, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's equaled Glenn McGrath for yeah. Test wickets. No, it's about Matt Fifers. Is it? To, he's yeah. equaled him for Fifers. That's pretty impressive. Mm. How do you rate him as Harath? Yeah, uh, just not dangerous, is he? It's really bizarre because he, he does really well. But uh, how has picked up all those w- wickets when he obviously wouldn't never got on the team when Murley was in the team? How does how has he picked up three hundred and odd wickets? Well, he's he started late. He's pretty old, isn't he? Yeah, but so. it's like. For anybody to make 300 wickets no, is I know. brilliant. But he's had to do it. Okay, He would have played on pitches in Sri Lanka where two spinners were needed. Yeah. And he would have been a backup to Murali. But to be the main spinner and be on 360-odd wickets yeah. after Murali. And it's Murali retired, what, four or five years I ago? Think he's got, Incredible. I think he's got really good control. I don't think he yeah, bowls badly. Patient, a patient bowler yeah, as well. Yeah, I don't think he bowls badly. And he's just been around for a long time. I like him as a bowler. He's not, definitely useful. I like him as a 
bowler, but I mean, like, I like watching him. Not that I would want him in my team. You wouldn't want him in your team. It just doesn't look. I just quite like it that he's chubby. Well, see, is he? <laughs> he's not very good at batting, is he? No. Oh, I'll tell you what I want to bring up. We were having that argument about um, Rabada and Amir. Yeah. And someone put up Rabada's bowling average is better and his batting average is better. Yeah. I would still rather have him here. <laughs> right, okay. Definitely. Just just to say. So well, that's we'll, not what we'll that the, doesn't we'll, we'll do the comments. Doesn't later. change my argument. We'll do the, just, we'll we'll do we'll do comments. Um later on in the episode if you'd like. All right. You could riff it out. Have we got uh are we still doing news or are we going to the test rankings? No, we got I'm on test rankings now. Right. You've got to guess. Who's Tell me who's number one in the world in the ICC test. Oh. Should okay, number one in the world. Uh number one in the world. Well, I'm quick. <laughs> okay. Uh India. Yes. Okay. And who's number two? Number two. Uh Australia. Number three? Huh. Uh, two out of two. Number three. This is probably getting pretty boring pretty quickly. Number three. Uh, test matches. England? England current at number four. South Africa number three. South Africa. Okay. So the front four, it's kind of... Generally, you're probably thinking that front four will chop and change throughout yeah. the years. Yeah. But they are the front f- yes. four runners in test match cricket, aren't they? New Zealand, Pakistan. New Zealand fifth? Yeah, New Zealand fifth. Pakistan wow. sixth. Sri Lanka seventh. West Indies eighth. Bangladesh ninth. And poor old Zimbabwe down there at tenth. It's a shame there's so don't get a few game. countries that play test match cricket, isn't it? It's like yeah. West Indies at eighth. Well, no. So they shouldn't be in the top ten. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, come on. Where are Bangladesh? They are... Ninth, oh. but that's gonna change, isn't it? Though, if you look at the ma- West Indies, have played 30 matches and Bangladesh 19. Do you think we're in a bit of a lull for quality of test match cricket? I do. Um, that, Austra- that Australian team should not be the second best team in the world. Well, who should be the second best team in the world? No, but I mean, but, but, but that team is not a team that should be holding the second. Like, they're the second best team in the world. Do you know what I mean? So that's a bit disappointing. No. They've got Steve Smith and David Warner. Yeah. And it's Mitchell Stark's quite good, but... (sighs) It's a bit of a lull. Do you think anyone's misrepresented in that? As in their place doesn't doesn't reflect... Bangladesh? Yeah, I think Bangladesh. I think we just... We're probably looking at Bangladesh... Beating Sri Lanka, we we saw Bangladesh draw a Test series with England, yeah, a, a, few, a couple of months back, and we've seen them, you know, take teams almost all the way. They just haven't got that knack of winning yet, have they? That's the problem with Bangladesh cricket at the moment is that they haven't got. I think it's confidence, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, they don't just they, knowing that you can they, win. Yeah, they don't know how to win, yeah. do they? They don't have to just get over the line. Yeah. They'll do all the hard work. They just won't quite get over the line. Where are Pakistan in that sick? So they're, yeah, before Sri Lanka. Mm. Yeah, Pakistan, all right. Look, that that top four will depend on who's at, who's at home condition. Yeah. So well, if they we play know, at yeah, home, they'll go just... first. Do you know what I mean? If uh, India don't, if India play away from home, not a chance though. If India play outside of Asia, no way are they going to be sitting top. I think at, if those top four just played each other in a tournament of playing at each, each other's venues. Yeah. It would just England would have the best chance of winning in South Africa. Yeah. I think. What about England versus Australia and Oz? I would back England in Oz. South Africa against South Africa. Yeah, then Australia Austra- in Australia. If that makes sense. I would think England would have a better chance of winning. Against South Africa in South Africa. And so we know what happens if we go to India and play them. So if you would, let's just take out home conditions, if you like. Right. All of those teams got to play away from home. They can't effectively yeah, do what right, Pakistan okay. has to do. Um, never play at home. 
Who's got the best chance of being consistently number one, if you like? They can never play at home. So the 2018, it comes around. And um, India, Australia, South Africa and England. Not, none, of, none of the teams can play in the home conditions. They've always got to play away. Okay. So England are going to uh, go to South, <coughs> South Africa. England are going to go to Australia. I would go for... But England will play like India and Australia. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I would probably... I would go for Australia. I think... Do you Australia are the best team away from home at the moment? Just because I think Australia have the best mentality. Oh, what, a winning mentality? Yeah. They They are absolutely desperate not to lose. Yeah. Whereas if England get in a losing position like that, oh, we lost before, we know how to deal with this. Whereas Australia are desperate not to lose. They'll do anything not to. Do uh, India not carry that with Kohli as the captain? I think Kohli has that. He's desperate, desperate not to lose and super competitive. Their bowlers? I think India's batting is something that's quite impressive. Bat what? deep. Their st- and their spin. Jadeja and Ashwin, the two best bowlers in the world. Arguably. Yeah. I mean, coming off facing England and India. But I know they, they've been good for a while, but I think if they had to play outside of India, especially if they were playing in South Africa, Australia and and England, I think they might. Well, they'd, I think they might come fourth. Or well, India out aren't of those four teams. a team that they can't, can't travel, you're saying? If they all played each other yeah. away from home, yeah. I think they'd come bottom of the group. I mean, it's so hard to say. I don't know. I would go for them or South Africa. As bottom? As bottom. So you're saying Australia and England, well, Australia are front runners in England. Are oh, man. Behind. It's so hard, wouldn't you? But that's really harsh. What would your order be? Um, I think... I think, <laughs> well, if England had to go and play, if England could, pl- could stay in, not home conditions, but conditions similar to home, yeah. to like South African conditions, New right. Zealand conditions, yeah. swinging conditions, then they would come out top. But say if you had to play England versus Australia in India, Australia will win. Do you know what I mean? Yes. England, if England have to play inside of Asia, they will not win games. Play, if they could play all of their cricket outside of games, then England will be, you know, one or two in the world. You know, they would be constantly very, very good, I think. Do you reckon if we played, if England played Australia in India, Nathan Lyon would be the best spinner in the world? No. <laughs> Just end up because shooting up the rankings. No, 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 no. <laughs> can't, can't give them that much. It's interesting, though. I think, though, what, go back and listen to what we said about what we changed about cricket. I definitely said I didn't like... You said... You said that the ranking system doesn't work. Yeah. I said I'd bring in a league system, but it'd be very hard to implement. We yeah, both... nearly impossible. I kind of agreed on that, but that was theoretically the best way to judge a yes. ranking system. But whether it's possible, it's another question. I don't think... I honestly don't think this 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 ranking system works. It doesn't, does it? Um, I don't even understand it. I'm looking at Bangladesh here. Have played 19 games. Now they've got 61 points. Now compared that to West Indies, who have played 30 games, got 69 points. And West Indies are above them. Yeah, but it's very they. There must be something put in that says like Duckworth Lewis. <laughs> will give you more points per game because you play less games. Yeah. That's so it's like an average of points. Yeah, exactly. So because if Bangladesh played thirty games, they're going to have more points. But than West imagine Indies. showing this to somebody who doesn't. Yeah, I know. Who doesn't understand cricket? It wants to. It wants to. No, it's rubbish. And they see right. How come? You know, England have played fourteen more Test matches than India, and India are top. <laughs> <laughs> And how come England have actually got more points? The way that the ICC display it is matches, points, and then rating. Okay. Now, England have got more points than anybody else on there. 
because they've played more games. Right. But they're not rating. They're rated. They're rated fourth in the world, yeah. not top. I know. Like you show that to someone who's trying to get uh, someone trying to get into cricket. That's mm. th- that's enough to say no. I'm, you know what? That is. <laughs> that's, it doesn't make any sense, does it? And it's no. In, you think so like even like the ODIs. You think it should work better in the ODIs, but it doesn't. The ODI should be set up for something that you could easily find out the best in the world because of the amount of games you play. Right. It's all of the in all of forms of in all countries, ODIs probably do better than Test cricket generally. Yeah. Especially in the countries outside of the top three of India, Australia, and England, we should be able to get almost equal games there. But I'm looking down there, and you know, West Indies have played forty games compared to. South Africa, who played 62. You know, England played 60, while Sri Lanka, of all teams, played, played 65. Yeah. And, like, this, the, the, the T20 is just as bad. <laughs> you know, get, guess who the number one I, uh, ODI team in the world is? Australia. South Africa. South Africa. Now, guess who the number one T20 champion? Uh, West Indies. They won the World Cup. Yeah, you'd think so. New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand. Where are New Zealand in the test rank? Fifth, aren't they? Fifth. You know, guess where England come in on the ODI? ODI, fourth. Same as the test match? Fifth. Fifth, all right. And the same with the T20s. Yeah. Do you think if we did, say we went for like the league thing and you did... If you could get it, so everyone played the same amount of matches over two years and you just gave them three points for a win, not a series win, just three points if you win a test match and one point if you draw one and none if you lose. Yeah. And then you just did it for two years, Yeah. finished top, they're the best team and then it just resets. Yeah. And you do two years again and just do it like that. Yeah. Would be much better, wouldn't it? Be so much simpler. But, yeah, but I know it's yeah, you because it's you can't get all the t- and you wouldn't be able to play everyone. Oh uh, yeah, well it's, I think if you go back, it, there's loads of things that have been said to improve the way it's uh, cricket. Uh, cricket is laid out as a competition. Uh, whether you're gonna have two tiers. Do you think there's a need for a world ranking? Is that do we actually need it? Well, because you're not just sack it off completely. People know the best. It's like. There's either a standout yeah. best team in the world or there isn't. Do you know what I mean? You don't need world ranking. You don't. You don't need it in ODI or T20 because we have a champion. We have a yeah. Exactly. We have world a, Cup. A, a tournament that it's like though we see it in the football. We have FIFA 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 out rankings, don't they? But yeah. there's the best team in the world at the moment. Yeah. And that might I don't know who that best team is, but it might not be the person who last who won the last World Cup. No. Um. Cricket's odd when it comes to because they're all little series and yeah. I mean, I think it wouldn't be terrible to just scrap the world rankings. Yeah, unless you bring in, like I said, like a an equivalent of like the Duckworth Lewis to make it you, fair. That do you think this is yeah? Well, I think they have brought in a Duckworth, Duckworth right. Lewis. I was going to ask you, do you think this is the best way? In the current predicament, actually, with the shit show they've got, right? They're actually doing the best they can. Yeah. Oh, By d- giving this, if you want to call it a Duckworth Lewis method, a a method of madness, if you like, in, right. in, yeah. in working out points per games. Are uh, the ICC doing the? Because what we're saying is the simple thing to say, kind of in hindsight, would be to add a league. Yeah. We know that might be really difficult. I mean, I, I mean, I don't understand it enough to say whether they're doing it well or not. But just the fact, I, it's, I think it's pointless. I would get rid of it. It's, it's only a, a reputation thing, isn't it? Going, oh, we're the best. We're the number one team in the world. Though there like, is, well, you are in the ranking, but everyone knows the rankings. If you play more games, you've got more chance of being the best. Oh, though, well, that shouldn't be true. Although, if, if you look at that, 
India played 36 games, number one. Right. England's played 50. But where have India four. played all those games? Probably at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it just doesn't work. There's too many variables, I think. I think that's the problem. Then what about in the ODI ra- in the ODI where you've got to fi- finish in the top eight to get into it or top whatever to get into to get into a tournament? How how important is that then? I, so I you got to you got to qualify yeah, yeah, to get I into think the tournament. That's where it would become relevant if you have a World Cup and you need to qualify people. So you're so then you, that that then you could go well all right. There's a point to having it, but you don't qualify for anything being in the top five in Test match rankings, do you? So you saying keep this look with Lewis method for just let, let's talk about limited overs cricket. Yeah, oh that's fine. That's fine. You can probably adapt it a bit, and it could do some improvements. Because let's be honest, we can't have teams like Ireland, who were on this ranking system in front of my eyes. They played twenty-one games. But you, where are they ranked? The bottom of these major ODI playing nations. Right. Are Afghanistan ranked in that? Yeah, they're above Zimbabwe and Ireland. Ah. So, but you can't you you can't honestly think the likes of Ireland or Afghanistan are going to draw enough no. revenue into no, being definitely not. suitable f- to play cricket. You know, I was looking at the news the other day and we saw Glamorgan have made a loss of over £300,000. Is it Glamorgan, was it? Yeah. Jesus. So you could just imagine, you know, Ireland. <laughs> what <are> they? To <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. But I, I think there's much more relevance if you have a World Cup and you need to qualify teams so you don't get those minnow teams in it. So l- like this ICC thing that's coming up. If you need to make sure teams qualify, you have to have a ranking system to do it. Yeah. So then that's fine. But test matches, there isn't. It's like we don't say, oh, we won't play Bangladesh because they're ranked outside the top six, so we won't play them. You, if you take out a ranking system, does, does do, do they cricket or does the? I've never ever thought that a team versus another team says, "Right, we have to win this game to become number one in the world." Does that happen? Yeah, England did it. England of England did it when we were really good. When we won the Ashes, we like yeah. trot and all that, and then we were on that crazy run. They were like, "Oh, they need to win this." Yeah, they were concentrated on doing it. So England knew if they don't win this, they're not, they won't become number one in the world. Yeah, they, they wanted... That was their thing. of They were becoming number one in the world and they needed to win so these games. Do you not do think it. that the ranking system that might that adds things like that, like being more competitive, uh, working towards a goal, which would be number one in the world, working towards being uh, officially the best team in the world? Yeah, maybe, but minimal. If if you beat everyone, everyone knows you're the best team in the world. Like with that Australian the only, team, the only problem is is that we've we've sp- spoke about it just a few minutes ago. But beating everyone, you don't see those the, the the teams like the Australian team or the West Indies team, or you know a, an older England team. We. Or, That's what I was saying. Really low. Yeah, you well, but you don't see that because of home conditions. You do not see a touring team like a West Indies team, like a, you know, what was it from 1990 to 2005 Australian team. Yeah. You don't see the holding of, you know, the Michael Holding era of West Indies cricket. Those, what what did that West Indies team, did they go five years and beaten or something ridiculous? It was mental, yeah. And uh, did not, you see Not that losing a test series, that was Interview it. with Michael Holding. They only lost one test match. He said that didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... <laughs> but you, uh, you don't, you don't get, that anymore well like, we haven't had, we haven't had it for like five years right if India turned up in England tomorrow okay in the summer yeah no I know they're not going to dominate like, no, I like, know. like they did yeah and they're the best team in the world yeah that's what I'm saying I think we're in a lull of, of I think we're in a lull of so East sorry is the ICC rankings there because there actually is no team like you said who who can go and beat every team. So there's no way of knowing. You know, we knew Australia was the best test team in the world for, you know, all of the 90s. But you, I mean, but because we have, you can't have that consistency yeah. with a team now, you have to have this in to show 
to show who the best is. Yes, you do. When when teams are that close, the rankings help decide who's the best officially. But this whole thing, we've just been talking about the fact that it's not really true. <laughs> it's like it doesn't really doesn't really yeah, work yeah. and it doesn't really represent who is the best team. Well, because we're just going to riff this episode, I'm going to go straight in with so we all learn a little bit more about you, about your favourite players. All right. Uh, past, present, international international players or English players. Just throw some names out. Oh, what, mine? We may as well make this a super, super, super long episode. <laughs> yeah, go on. Just throw uh, some names out. Get ready for another 45-minute episode. Um, our, uh, My favourite players. I'll go for a batsman, a bowler, and an all-rounder. Eng- I want England and international. All right. Uh, so go for England guys first. England, my favourite yeah. ever English batsman would probably be. I love Jonathan Trott when he was yeah in just heyday. Yeah, bowler would be James Anderson, just insane. Right, okay. Swing bowling, brilliant to watch. Uh, and I'm not going to pick an England all rounder. I don't have one. Do you want to put someone else in there then? Uh, who uh. Just an out and out favourite player, probably Straussy when he was captain and we were just dominating. Right, yeah, and he was scoring runs. And, and any other English uh, English boys you've taken a liking to? Um, not really. No. Not okay. No. Internationally, choose just a handful Sachin, of players. Sachin, yep. Shane Warne, Brian Lara. So the greats. It's just, yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> the but you, yeah, That's but you're there. always. Uh, yeah, always drawn to them and when I when I got into cricket it was 2005 and Shane Warne was incredible yeah yeah. and we'll it's just yeah. like it's just so yeah definitely not morally definitely not you've just so you've gone for the for the greats of the game no one else caught your eye that you've, you've taken interest in you've watched you've liked not necessarily because they're Brian Lara the best batsman ever or um, Tatchin or one of the best bowlers you know I always liked that <laughs> Well, he's, I always liked Adam Gill, Chris, but there. he's up there with like he changed <laughs> like the wicket keeping role forever. Yeah. So that's kind of still. what about it? what about, what about uh, in the past though? And anyone you've you've enjoyed watching highlight packages of or uh, heard heard speaking about the game now? One of the best things ever is watching Michael Holdings over against right, uh, yeah. boycott. Yeah, yeah, that is good. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, that is good. It's yeah. insane. So yeah. And he's so good at the punditry. Yeah, he's a, I love him. He's probably my, one of my so, favourite, yeah. Yeah, Michael Holdings. Michael Holdings, your past player. Go on. What about you? Uh, my English boys. Uh, my current favourite player probably in the England squad now is Stuart Broad. He's been Stuart Broad for right. a long time. Yeah. I, right. I, I, I just really... It's a man crush. I like Broadley when he bowls. He infuriates me beyond belief when he bats. But... Um, Chris Wokes has taken over that role now, hasn't he? Yeah, pretty much. But Brody, when he bowls, it's oh, something. When it, you know, when everything clicks into place and you watch him take six for. Right. There's that nothing better than that. For me, when I watch it, that's right. my one of my okay. favorite moments, especially against oh, what? What did he pick up? Eight for. No, how many did he pick up against Australia? I don't know. It was a lot for not very much. So, it was crazy. Um. I've always liked, yeah, I've always liked Trotty. Yeah, Trot. It was just so good. I've always liked Trotty. It was like one of the only English batsmen that once he got in, it's like, yeah, he's going to make runs. So I can actually watch this and not really be like, just thinking he's yeah, going to get yeah. out. Yeah, I've always. Because Kevin Peterson been. never had that. No, no, I was always. Never, never had the thing of like, oh, it's all right. We'll be all right. You think Joe Root looks pretty solid at the crease though now? Is the difference between watching KP? You just thought, no way, he looks ropey. Yeah, not ropey, but he looks like he Risky. could he could get himself out. Yeah, well, and you just knew that because his mentality was horrible. Who else? Did I, I was a big fan of Graham Swan, really big fan right. of Swanee. Um, loved him on and off the pitch. I liked hearing what he had to say in interviews and right. punditry, and I just thought. I just love the idea of someone coming on, coming on and taking a wicket in their first over, consistently doing that. <laughs> just 
He did it exciting. quite a long time. Yeah, didn't he? yeah. And I thought, and I always like the ideas of idea of old pros coming back in. Like <laughs> you know, you're tested and you're very yeah. good at county level, and you come back in and you show you can do it at international level. Chess Gothic, big fan of Chess Gothic. Yeah. Uh, obviously, only got to see him go to Pakistan after '05. Did he go to Ashes '06? Mm. Or did he pull out just before then? No, that was Cook. Cook went Ashes yeah. 06. So I think uh, Cheska might have pulled out just before then. Yeah. Uh, if you like. I think he did come back into England colours, but then went. It's a shame, actually. I thought Chesco's uh, career was kind of cut short, actually. Yeah. And I uh, would love to have seen Chesco go on. He killed it in County Game. He's just so well, obvious. He's, he's, he's so still incredible. killing it now. He's, yeah. He, you, Look at the stats from last year. Now, yeah, he wears glasses. It at the doesn't crease. really matter because he just doesn't move his feet anyway. Um, big fan of Paul Co- Paul Collingwood. Right, yeah. Just I don't know how you can be a fan of Paul Collingwood. Paul Collingwood was consistent for England. Wasn't not... wouldn't wouldn't ever go and score massive scores. Okay, wouldn't take heaps of wickets, but would just come in with important innings. But how do you get excited about that? Like, how do you become a fan of average? Do you know what? When you look at that team, think about when Paul Collingwood was batting, who batted around him. He had the likes of Kevin Peterson, who, when he got out, he would go back into the changing room and be like, "Mayor, it's not my day." Freddie Flintoff would get himself out day in, day out, right. hit down long on the throat. Right. Garrett Jones couldn't hold a bat, right. but Collingwood would go out and give it his all. Right. Be there and. So- you liked him because he tried, but wasn't yeah, very because he good. tried. No, he was very good. <laughs> he wasn't very. Good. He had a better average of strokes. I don't. That I've. Uh, we'll go back to the Rabada Amir. I don't. I don't pick on averages. Right. Okay. Don't go on that. I but think they're misleading. Collingwood is just really enjoyed Collingwood and his fielding. I though. don't know how you could get excited about Collingwood. It, One of the worst looking batsmen. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Ever. Definitely, but when like he when he when he he like he play a defensive shot and his whole his bat pads. would twist in his hand. Oh, I'll tell you what, I've got something to say. Go on. We talked. Is it SJ? He talks about cheating. Right. Is it the Indian wicketkeeper? Yeah, Steve Smith on ninety seven, I think. Edges it into his pads to get to caught in his pads. Indian wicketkeeper was trying to grab it out of his pads, <laughs> and he's. <laughs> but that, yeah, that that's happened. not cool. That. That would happen to uh, Collie, wouldn't it? He would always get caught up in his pads. Yeah. Uh, any other England boys? Um, not particularly. I've always liked old boys coming into the team and doing well. I was a big fan of before 05, um, when cricket would be on and you would kind of take an interest, but not necessarily keep up with it. Right. And that was Graham Thorpe. Again, really? was another gutsy little, little player who probably wasn't, the best you looking like, player. You just like like average, don't you? You just get right behind them. The ones that try really hard. Yeah, the ones that really try that, really hard. Just I like aren't that, that good. Yeah. Oh, Graham Thorpe's a very good batsman. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're all right. Graham Thorpe's probably a better batsman than Collingwood. Oh yeah, but pick anyone. <laughs> and I was actually, I remember looking at the 05 Ashes and seeing Kevin Peterson. They didn't know anything about KP. Didn't really follow him in it. Uh, make those runs in South Africa in the ODI format. Yeah. Though I know about it now, but thinking what the, what are, my favourite player's Thorpe gone. <laughs> I was probably what oh five. I was the age of what am I eleven, twelve, right. twelve. I'm just thinking. My f- you've just axed <laughs> someone that I've watched consistently do really well. Uh, international players, Kumar Sankara is my number one. Yeah, I just I actually had the pleasure of meeting Kumar it's when I was like when I was younger. He was just really nice. The Sri Lankan team. And I love that Sri Lankan <laughs> team. They're, they're, they're my second team. Uh, and Kumar Sangakara, I just just watching him bat was yeah, he's insane. I don't know how you can go from Collingwood to Sangakara but and enjoy a, both. There's of them. a difference, isn't there? It's like there's yeah, there is a difference. But I'm really you know, it's like patriotic watching, towards watching England players and Collie. Someone get tortured. And then watching someone play classical music, it's like that kind of difference between how good they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Collie was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else internationally? I bet you Mural Lithian. I bet you just loved him. I, I did like Murali. I, do you know what I liked oh, about Murali? Not necessarily watching him bowl, but was just... His, his eyes. 
His, a- <laughs> his attitude, the way that he'd like to have a laugh. He loved it, didn't he? He just lo- and he was really knowledgeable about cricket. And that well, basically that Sri Lankan team. I, apart from Malinga, I loved every single <laughs> one of them. I really, I loved uh, Jai Saria, Jai Ward. Jai Saria used to grind me down because he was <laughs> would score big against England. But loved that uh, sh- that Sri Lankan team. And it's really a shame to see Sri Lanka cricket in the state it's in. Have you ever really no. liked an Australian? No. No, I knew you wouldn't. <laughs> Langer's probably my favourite one, but that's because he's small and gutsy. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> I can't bring myself to like an Australian. Uh, Indian cricketer? Uh, question out, that goes out to SJ again. He might remember. There was a little guy, a little spinner. And I used to call him Lumpa Lumpa. That's Chubby nice guy. Chubby guy. Always wore sunglasses. Used to bowl spin. Can't remember if it was leggy or offy. But... That would have been about 06, 07, maybe 08. And this is your favourite bloke? Yeah, well, my what? Favorite, so you don't know Indians. his name? You don't know what he bowled? <laughs> <laughs> and this is your lo- favourite bloke? <laughs> Actually, I'll tell a lie. I liked uh, Raul Dravid. Right. Gutsy. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but he was yeah, incredible. Anyone else from across the world? Any South Africans? Uh, Pollock, Sean Pollock. Yeah. Uh, he's my all-rounder, if you like. Jack Callis. <coughs> he was pretty insane. Just always looked like... What? Just... I don't know, just... Needed to train a bit harder. No, it always looked like he was like... Um, like a genius. Like, or cleverer than ever, <laughs> everyone else. Like, if you... I just always thought that like, he thought... Not that. That he looked like he was like top of the class. Right. He's got like a, <laughs> a batting average better than his bowling average. <laughs> Great fielder. Um... They, yeah, you're right. Australians are find it very difficult to like. So your fav from that team that came to England in '05, okay. your favourite player from that Australian team is Langer. Langer. Uh, so who came? Do you think he was probably the worst? Not on that tour, but yeah. over the history of them playing, he was the worst out of that eleven. Damien Martin, surely. All right, yeah, okay. Katic. I think Langer's better than Katic. Katic, sorry. All right, yeah, probably. He batted uh, six, didn't he then? Yeah, he batted. Did. That's weird. Um, I never really got on with Pup. Who? Uh, Michael Clark. Oh, right. Never never fancied it. No? no? I liked his left arm bowling. Well, no, he wasn't left arm, is he? Is he left arm? I don't know. Oh, I just That's like w- we, we, we only watched him bowl twice, well, didn't um, he? <laughs> he broke his, his back. Well, yeah. Injured his back. Yeah, Australians have never, never got on. No. I mean, you can't get I them. really don't like them now. But I just, when they were that good, it's just like, yeah. Did you like Ponting? Amazing. Yeah. You, can you, you know he's a d- How player. do you not like Ponting? He's like small grinder. Yeah, but, he's, but he does play beautiful shots. That's yeah, he does, but he, he does, he's not as classical as like Kumar Sangakar. But he's also the Australian like captain. But yeah, but he was incredible. And he I'm not one for sporting. Room. I'm honestly in the face not one for sporting on rivalry, <laughs> right? But I cannot f- come to like <laughs> Australian cricketer. Right. Look, look at that team now, and I. Who's the fast bowler? What Mitchell Stark? Yeah, Starkey's the only one I like. What? Maybe why? Oh, I like that one that pretends to be Alistair Cook. Well, the uh, the really young lad. <laughs> yeah, what's his name? Got in. Horse cum. <laughs> Hands come. Hands come. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I um, I, I don't like David Warner. I, oh, he needs to be have another. Someone needs to have a fight with him again. Him Ju- and Kohli would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, <laughs> let's put someone else uh, up again. Joe Root can't take Warner, can he? No. Who but who could take Warner? In, what team? an international cricket. Oh, in the England team now. So who would you put up against? Are we talking just physique or like actual? They can have a fight in that, that club. I, I reckon Stokes. He's probably quite an angry little ginger Chris, bloke. Chris, I reckon Chris Jordan will have a, have his way with him. No way. Chris Jordan's huge. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. That is rubbish. What? what, what do you want to <laughs> he's pitch, not. Though? No, he's not. I tell you, Owen Morgan's got those fucking big chunky arms, but oh, I don't reckon he's got the attitude to have yes. a fight with him. 
So in, in the test team. I don't even got it. Alistair Cook's a big lad, but yeah, Alistair's not getting in a fight. Yeah, <laughs> no, there's no there's no Stokes is probably the most aggressive, isn't he? And he's pretty big. Like Chris Jordan. You you just said in the test team and yet you've picked Chris Jordan, who we put in our worst England test team. Yeah, but uh, he's coming along the tour just to have a fight. <laughs> um so you know, I'll Are you like looking for a picture of him yeah, now? Yeah. So you can prove that <laughs> yeah, he's not that big actually. No, he isn't. I told you that. Right, seeing as we're riffing, let's just go straight I'll just like you to use the word riffing. All right. Feels like we're um like doing like a sketch, like a comedy sketch. Oh, no, I, don't, I won't read the lines. Get straight in there. Let's go on to... Uh, let's finish off with our comments. Okay. You know when it's quite late and you don't know how to get to the comments? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've, <laughs> it's at half past one now. Right, right, we've got about like three or four, haven't we? No, we've got two. To, get, we've got to go now. through. Right, yeah, I've got okay. it. Okay, right, let's it, go. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. So the first one... Is coming from. It comes from SJ. Well, right. I need to get my reading on now. Come on. So, uh, Dhoni was the best, and I think Indian team have still uh, got a place for him just for DRS. Have uh, you ever heard that before? I don't understand. Bring in a player just so they can know how to use a DRS. <laughs> 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 um, if he was that good at it, I'd be like, really? Does he make that much difference? He's He's that much better. Tell you what, they could bring in Downey to shut Coley up, couldn't they? His record speaks for himself in limited overs. Uh, winner of all ICC trophies. Did we have a go at him? I might have had a go at him. Two IPLs, one Champions League, two Tri Series. Yeah, I don't think anyone's arguing with his credentials. Two Asia Cups. I mean, looking back at it, it's just ridiculously brilliant. Can't say the same for away test matches, unfortunately. Well, that's been Indian cricket, isn't it? <laughs> Coley's always been. A, oh, this is me having a pop at Coley. Right. I'm surprised he didn't come okay. on my favourite <laughs> players. Uh, Kelly has always been aggressive and he says it helps his game. Uh, the record also suggests the same other than England and this series. I don't mind him being aggressive. If he gets the results like he did in Sri Lanka after being 1-0 down in that series. Though, he had a, you know, had a pop at the Australians for... Would you Would you mind it? If an, the England captain, if Joe yeah, Root just yeah. started getting really aggressive yeah, yes, over the yeah, top, yeah, it would. But we just won won everything. No, no, it, was st it would still it would bother me. Yeah, no, I don't think it would. It would. Um, I really want India to do well outside of Asia in tests, and I think with Curly's aggression, and with Umesh Sharma, uh, Bhuvi and Ishant, uh, it, and if Varun pr improves his accuracy while bowling 150, it can happen. So obviously, SJ is happy with Curly being. Bit of a donut. <laughs> you hate him, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Called him a donut. <laughs> right, back back with SJ. I think uh, there are serious problems with the test cricket and that is home advantage. We've spoken about this yeah, multiple okay. times. Any other sport in the world doesn't work this way. Some Australian journalists after the first test said India got trapped in their own trap. And after the second, he said Indian pitches have always been uh, doctored. I don't understand this. When India go to Oz, uh, none of the pitches spin. At least in India, you can reverse swing. I don't think you can... Let's not use the word swing in India. Yeah. It can reverse, but it can die. Very, that reverse can die very quickly. India, you, it's going to spin. Yeah. That's the way you're going to get people out, isn't I it? Unless you're a team like England that will crumble and <laughs> anyone can get you out. Yeah. Uh, like Anderson did in 2012 series. I mean, it's a fact that England, Oz, South Africa, New Zealand... We'll have much fairer tests. We've yeah. just been talking about this. As they will play swing very well. And India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh will have uh, much fairer games as they sp play spin very well. I have a solution. But I don't know if it's any good. Well, we'll be the judge of that. Uh, I would be happy to see a six-match test series between India and Australia where they pl are played in India and three are played in Australia. So three in India, three in Australia. Right. And it goes into a series of six. Uh, what do you guys think about this? I suppose you could do, if you did that, you but you could just have, because we you play teams at home, don't you? And then the next time you play them, however long until that is, you play them at, away, don't you? 
Well, that yeah, tends yeah. to be the way. So you could just carry it, couldn't you? Yeah. You could go, right, we've had our three. We won them. And then two years when we come and play you there, yes, we yeah. can keep on record. We're 2-1 up. Going, at, oh, yeah, yeah. that would be good. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I wouldn't necessarily want, you know, like the, like the Ashes. No. I wouldn't want 10 test matches back to back. What, five in Australia? No, five I in yeah, but I don't think you wouldn't have to change that much. Would you just keep record of it? That might be quite good. That's not a bad idea. Uh, I am really frustrated of people saying India only win in home conditions. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you say. Not home conditions, <laughs> Asian conditions. I mean, what the fuck, people? We are the second best team in 50 over World Cup cricket. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I ca- count this hand movement as? Like, <laughs> oh, limited over cricket. The conditions do not play anywhere no. near as much as a part as no. Test cricket. Uh, we are the best in ICC trophy, seventy-one uh, percent win ratio, um, and third in T Twenty with sixty-two percent win ratio. Seven of that fifteen Asia Cups they've won, only won one while hosting. Any any thoughts on this? It's it's more sort of playing in those Asian conditions. You're very very. If good. you're going to talk about Test matches. Indian cricket are dominant in Asian conditions yeah. and nowhere near as dominant but away from home. They do quite, but yeah, they're never going to be as dominant away from no, home. Limit, Just like every test. Li- limited overs, the way pitches are prepared now for limited overs. It's the same everywhere. Yeah, you're it's the g- same you're everywhere. G- it might be a bit more hot or a bit more humid. Yeah. But the balls are rubbish anyway. So, so you'll get 300 <laughs> on most pitches. Um, uh, the last comment from SJ. The newly committed... The newly appointed committee of administrators of the BCCI, where well, the Supreme Court have decided that Kumble will now be promoted to team director, and the CAC of Sachin VVS and Ganguly is likely to promote uh, Raul Dravid to coach of India from under 19s. What do you guys think? What do you guys think these decisions will help Indian cricket or hamper under 19 kids? They're all great players. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I don't think any harm will come no, from it. Like it's like sound those three, those four players we just mentioned. That just sounds like what every test team does. Yeah, just isn't it? It's like, well, we'll take the legends of the past and we'll put them in positions in the. I don't. I can't see. I so can't see that, hindering. Yeah, it's fine. Cricket. It's fine. That's good. Chill out. <laughs> uh, on to Ed, who says bowling averages Rabada twenty one point seven six. Yeah. Well. Doesn't change, 1.76. Yeah. Doesn't change my mind. Amir, 33.72. Batting average, Rabada of 14.11. And Amir of 13.65. No debate, really. <laughs> also, yeah. because there will be uh, no England games for a while, what will your podcast be on? Your guess is as good as ours. <laughs> your comment. <laughs> it would be uh, good to hear you guys speaking about county games and the North versus South 50 over game. But again, the podcasts are really great. I don't really understand this North versus South. I had a little look at it the other day. And it's some games that go a little series, a mini series that goes on between right. big players of the North versus big players of the South. <laughs> and we'll have a look at it. Might have a chat about it on one of the, on one of the episodes, but I don't really understand much about it. Um, it would be good to hear you guys picking your uh, World Eleven for all time or since the 2000s. <laughs> or for different countries or are you talking about the New England franchise T20 system I do want to talk about this when when it comes around do you not want it well, what are we doing I didn't know this well, we're, we're, we're doing not, well, we're trying bash. to do oh, brilliant <laughs> <laughs> and your thoughts on it it would just be really interesting podcasts are really good cheers Ed well ch- cheers Ed thanks thanks man <laughs> uh, we'll definitely be doing our best team like we said we don't want to bunch them all together <laughs> <laughs> How's that? <laughs> uh, Twenty to two at the moment. I'm overtired. <laughs> I'm overtired. We need to finish this now. Right? Do you want to hear, Doctor uh, Ed? We'll be doing everything you've asked. <laughs> Do not worry about that. Uh, nice to have you coming, uh, Doctor Holmes. Is my worst England eleven? Michael Carberry's captain. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Lyth. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Gary Balance. Yeah. James Vince. Good. Ian Blackwell. Okay. Ben Duckett is the keeper. I think I've read this comment. Yeah. Chris and at Jordan. the end he goes, I know these are the rules, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> Chris Jordan, Gareth Batty, Sean Noodle. I've got B for that one. <laughs> Boyd Rankin, Sajid Mahmood, Nick Compton. Thing is, though, 
Uh, oh well, yeah, and apparently Compton's come back. Yeah, he's no longer. A yeah. Um, we, we've done this podcast before. We haven't released it, and that was pretty similar to our team. We did it since '05. Yeah, and that was pretty. Sim- we probably put Garrett Jones in as the keeper. Yeah, probably or Chris Reed maybe. We, we, that's Someone, very. But isn't there a comment of the most underrated players? Put Tim Ambrose in there. <laughs> we'll underrated. So, uh, Dr. Holmes finishes. <laughs> I know this is the rules, but... Uh, I don't care. Uh, we're playing in the 21st century. I actually we pretty much agree with you. I would, Nick Compton's got to make his way in for Gary Ballins, I think, in that team. Gary Ballins is probably the best player you've got in there. Sean Noodle was brilliant, Spinner. Old as <laughs> shit, but brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's probably a lie. Who have we got in there? Who's our, our Spinner? <laughs> the timid guy. Tread, tread, Treadwell's got to be worse. Treadwell, Treadwell's Sajid Mahmood, though, is a brilliant... We, I think we had Kabir Ali now. Played that no. one pass. Right, anyway. For your next Rainy Day podcast, can you please make an 11 of the most underrated English players? We 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 are, we are, but we didn't want to do back-to-back, we said. Didn't want to do back-to-back drafting teams. Some examples are Tim Ambrose. Underrated? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matty Pryor. All right. Craig Keyswetter. Yeah, I get mm, don't think he's un- I don't think he's underrated. OHR and ODIs. No, I'm a massive OHR. Yeah. He should have gone in my favourite players. He is a, a he's underrated. Not under, he's not he's underrated. underrated. No. Tim Breston. Uh, yeah, I think he probably <laughs> is underrated. Seriously. You hate him? No, I don't hate him. You said he smells. <laughs> uh, he just looks like the kind of bloke that might smell. They all rip him, but he's underrated, definitely. James Taylor. Yeah, all right. And uh, Chris Tremlett. He doubt yeah. It. yeah, Chris Tim Ambrose, he's not underrated. Not underrated. I'm guessing he thinks that, like, been harsh, that everyone thinks he's terrible. Yeah, he but he is. <laughs> it's right. not underrated, is it? What we, do you think? I actually thought Tim Ambrose was Get in, out. Was in no, you didn't. You're, you're trying to side with things so you don't get more Holmes. trolled. <laughs> 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 um... Dr. Holmes, like we said, we'll definitely be looking to do most underrated players and Tim Ambrose is on that list all day long. <laughs> yeah. That's S- so, 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 Same with Craig Keyswetter and Tim Breslin. Right, SJ's come back with his worst uh, in dinner. <laughs> in dinner 11. Go on. <laughs> Go on. I don't know any of these names. Go on. Um, Chopra. So, the worst. Darwin. Uh, yeah. Worst in year 11. I don't know if this is... Go on. Uh, Chopra, Darwin, yeah. uh, Mukund, okay. Rainer as captain because he had a short ball yeah. problem. Yeah. Yuvraj Singh, another short ball yeah. problem. Oja, wicket keeper, played. Uh, with none of the Ojas can play. <laughs> <coughs> no chance. Um, Oja, wicket keeper, played one, dropped four, scored nothing. Well, that's a good reason to not get in the team, isn't it? Uh, Erfa and Pathan, because pace and swing both are gone now. I picked him on our 2020 team. <laughs> <laughs> RP Singh, never good enough for the national team. Uh, Stuart Binney. Sorry, Roger. <laughs> Karen Sharma, leg spin doesn't spin a bit. Any changes you'd make to this team? And Oge, you uh, Oge can't do shit. <laughs> well, Owen... Owen any, well, changes? any any changes you'd make? Well, I got bollocked by saying Rainer was shit in T20. <laughs> yeah, right. Someone had a pop at me that saying he's This is scored. a test team, isn't it? Yeah, but... <laughs> so what's that got to do with it? Well, I... Pr- <sighs> no, How I'm, long I, is this episode? Jesus. SJ's doing... What's our, our last comment? 53 minutes. Oh. We'll riff it, we've riffed this one. Yeah. Uh, Nick Compton plays for Middlesex and he has returned by Jack Peter. Yeah. Right then. Well, we'll hopefully have an episode set up for you guys next week, next Sunday. Yeah. We'll definitely look to put some prior thought into that one. We might do a, might do a, the draft of England's underrated. Yeah, we might. That's quite. We good. might owe you a good episode like after that. after this fifty-five yeah. minutes <laughs> of just. Yeah, I enjoyed it. it a good. nice chat. It's more like a like a radio show <clears throat> where they just trying to fill time. Like today, I was walking to work <laughs> and I saw a black cat. Is it true if they walk in front of you, you get good luck? <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> nonsense. Um, so, give us, smash that subscribe button and give us a big like. Helps us out a load. Cheers, guys. See you next Sunday. <laughs>